Welcome to the Psychedelic Mom podcast. I am so excited that I'm here today with Snow Raven. You're back. How are you? Hello, hello, Riechal. Greetings from the land of giant elders, which I call them um, when I see uh, mountains. I'm in Boulder now in Colorado. Oh, beautiful. I'm in Sedona, so we're both looking at these beautiful mountains. Oh, yes. Yeah. So you've been traveling nonstop, I hear, uh, touring the world, sharing your music with all of us. And Snow Raven, you were born in one of the coldest, darkest remote areas of the world um, from the Republic of Saka. And since you were three, you started listening to the sounds of nature and It's so beautiful to hear these sounds that you're making, and you've created your own form of music that comes from kind of these nature sounds, and you kind of have this beatbox rhythm, and so I'd love you to talk about that and the shamanism of your people, and uh, so welcome here today. Thank you so, so much for having me, and uh, I'm really, really thrilled to share knowledge and wisdom about shamanism which is directly connected to psychedelic uh, journeys and um, the shamanism we call it Oyunahan uh, of Saha culture um, it's very ancient and uh, one of the um, old forms of shamanism you know as a phenomenon that shamanism exa- exists around the world uh, but um, as a word, shamanism, it came from our region. Saman, person who knows, from Tungus language. And Tungus language, um, which means Tungus people, Evenk people, in other words, um, they are our neighbors and they're nomadic uh, reindeer herders. So I'm from snowy, uh, as you said, very cold and dark uh, land called... Republic of Saha Yukutia officially. Uh, we call it as Saha Sire. And we um, you know I, I'm so sometimes um, when I look at back my childhood, when I have the sweet memories of my childhood, I just think, wow, how did I survive these 23 cold uh, winters when it can go to minus 96 by Fahrenheit or 72 by, by Celsius? And, um, you know, it just makes me to think um, how um, we became Saha people today and we survived. Um, That's because relying on, um, let's say, following all the cycles of life um, Mm -hmm. and bowing to the weather conditions, um, the law of universe and, and earth, and a lot of um, information will come from shamans because they're um, intermediary. There are people who uh, download a lot of information from the web of life uh, that the community would survive upon. Um, so my music and um, the content that I share during my workshops, uh, my life concerts, they're all based on... Um, Saha shamanism, and uh, we do have not a term, but it was archaic techniques of ecstasy came from uh, Mirchi Eliado, one of the anthropologists, uh, great anthropologists who studies shamanism. He's from Romania, and he called it that way in English. Mm-hmm. And um, I, when I was studying shamanism, I just realized, wow, there are tools to fall into trance, to Mm -hmm. uh, be in a transcendental state or altered state and extend your consciousness. And there are certain steps uh, how the shamans in my culture would bring that downloads for the community. We can Mm -hmm. talk about that um, um, a little bit later. I can explain you in details. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I... um, I came to the United States five years ago, and um, 
I was a street performer in Santa Monica Promenade and, uh, uh, you know, uh, combining traditional songs, mimicking birds and animal sounds, throat singing, which is Arctic beatbox mimicking of reindeer breath, um, also traditional songs that my grandmother taught me when I was three years old in order mm. to participate in summer solstice ceremonies called Hüch, and also uh, playing mouth harp and dancing northern dances. These are all, um, for me, are tools to mm. fall into trance. And while I'm in that state, I have a lot of downloads and insights. Um, oh, wow. So it's very, very interesting. Um, and did you learn this from your mother and father and grandparents? Is that how you learned falling into this trance? I think it just happens naturally. You learn the tools from your, uh, um, specifically, personally, I, I learned it from my grandmother. And uh, my mother is also, she's singer, my grandfather's singer, my grandmother's singer, they're father also singer so it's a lot of people are singers in Saha in my homeland um, because it's something natural to the human being we're all creative beings and um, living in remote um, also you know globalization came later um, my grandfather two generations before behind me they lived in a very traditional way in a wilderness in the middle of nowhere, in deep taiga, we call those open spaces in deep forest, alas. Mm -hmm. And um, so density of population was really, really small. And to travel from your place um, to another, um, alas, to visit your neighbor would take two, three days riding a horse, on a horse. And what person would do, they would naturally, you know, tap, with the rhythm of horse and sing um, the melodies of the landscape. I'm from very hilly. Uh, there are a lot of hills um, from my area, uh, in my area, Usaldan. Um, and uh, our melodies of the traditional songs are up and down, like. Versus the Westerners, they have more monotonic, mm -hmm. like. And it's um, all, you know, as a metaphor, it's just you. Mm -hmm sing a map or landscapes or the environment that you uh, you are in the poetry mm. your songs come out so it's something very natural there and um yeah that's that's what i do um wow. with most of my performances so did you grow up in that wilderness land, or were you living in a different environment than your grandparents? Very good grandparents. Yeah, very good question. So my grandfather was living in Alas, and they didn't have electricity. The source of heating was fireplace and um, cattle, because they were living through, like, there was a wall between the living area and the cattle, and they would provide heating. And um, so he <laughs> grew up like it is amazing, right? Like, how did they oh my survive? God. Minus 96. And the fact is, they uh, um, there would be more than 10 children. So, women would give as soon as they have a first moon cycle, they would give more than 10 children, and half of them will survive. So, my grandfather is one mm. of the seven survivors along among 12 children. It's something like I would say, um, natural selection. Mm. Um, and uh, longevity also is uh, his generation. They passed hundred years. Our generation is different. I was born in um, a village with three hundred people with electricity that he brought in to the to the village, wow. and he built um, kindergarten, hospital, um, school, and also place where people would gather indoors to sing songs. So it's um, it's still very wild. I grew up not having a water coming from sink 
or having a toilet indoors. It was outdoors, and imagine it's so cold. And how did you shower? Yeah, showering is or like bathe, melting snow, and then we had like aluminium bathtub, um, and then you poured water, and it's so funny. So I'm the oldest, and I have three young sisters, and um, so I was unlucky to for for the bath bathing um, uh -huh. because it starts from the baby from the first child mm -hmm. and then uh, it goes all the way to me so I'm the fourth who gonna use the same water so it's just like wow <laughs> now I think like wow how I appreciate the water coming through the sink because you mm -hmm. receive the um, clean water but there's something about water there with the ice, mm -hmm. melting ice and melting snow. It's all very nutritious. It's it's all very clean. It's not filtered. It just comes straight from the lakes. And uh, even drinking water, we harvested it from uh, frozen lakes and as ice cubes. Mm -hmm. And we stored it under the ground where we have a permafrost. So it's all very natural. And uh, here... Uh, in the United States, I have just the comfort, you know, everything comes. It's very easy to get your food out of the refrigerator. Just open the door of the refrigerator and you, boom, you have your food. But back in my homeland, I have to put layers of fur coats and go three to five meters down under the ground to grab water, mm -hmm. frozen water, meat or fish <laughs> every single day. <laughs> so you've been here five years yeah in the united states mm -hmm. yes so did you live in siberia up until that point i lived uh, i left my nest when i was 23 but after mm -hmm. that i started to um, um travel around the world i discovered bigger world uh and i was touring i was doing a lot of entrepreneurship uh, projects and um, yeah, I came here in 2018 and uh, with music project specifically. Mm -hmm. By that time, I already knew who I am, what I'm going to mm -hmm. do, what I'm going to bring to the humanity. So I would love to know what your plan for what your gift to humanity is. First, I want to ask you, though, what is it like to be living in the rhythms of nature kind of that, you know, cosmocracy and to come here and to open up a refrigerator and have water come out of a faucet that's filtered. What are you noticing in your body and your spirit? Any changes? Oh, yeah. So we know five sensations, right? Um, my hearing, first of all, that's what I really... Um, pay attention to because I'm a musician um, that became very uh, let's say it's automatically um, cancels the environment like you heard right now the motorcycle sound mm -hmm. so it's mm -hmm. the whole um, city sounds becomes like white noise mm -hmm. and uh, we don't have a silence here like a place where I live right now um, and um uh, it's um, just a reminder that how, um, you know, I was lucky to hear all the little details of the birds and animal sounds or even wind or the leaf that dances uh, when the wind blows or the grass or um, the sound of the little bugs when they fly. Um, it all has uh, certain frequencies. And specifically, you know, um, ravens, they, um, they they survive winters, minus 96. They don't fly. They don't migrate. They stay along with human beings. And um, I remember going outside for five minutes just to breathe and inhale frozen air. And it's like mm -hmm. two feet away from you and you cannot see anything. It's very foggy and it's very... Um, it's a dry air and it's very um, refreshing when you do mm -hmm. this one inhale and uh, I would just open up the door inhale and go inside immediately because 
like it gets quickly. You can burn your skin. It's so cold out there. And one of those days I heard raven flying above me. And do this sound. And there's a specific sound in the winter time. It's not like a this is more mm-hmm. more summer, spring and autumn. And and in the winter they do a lot of this high tone sound and I could hear the echo of it. I could hear how the sound spreads in the frozen air and has like a natural delay, natural reverb that I do today through the technology, through the certain effects in Ableton Live. Um, So we are mimicking the environmental sound um, today. And uh, I grew up listening to all of these details, like a cuckoo bird, this sign of spring, when they do... So they migrate, and when we hear first sound of cuckoo bird, we recognize that our spring began. Spring coming. Yeah, and it bounces from hill to hill. It's really, really wonderful. So that's a hearing. Here it became less sharp because my eardrums, like my ears, they automatically cancel when there's too much noise. Uh, Mm -hmm. I appreciate silence so much. Uh, My vision, seeing uh, because we use um, a lot of small screens today. Smartphones became part of our lives. And how many hours were s- we spend a day uh, looking at the, staring at the small screens and um, completely being in a different environment. So it's, it affected mm-hmm. my uh, seeing. So it became blurry, right? A lot of people wear mm-hmm. glasses with prescription or eye contacts. Um, I also um, noticed that taste and smell also changed because the smell is the freshest air that I missed, the most delicious air that we have in May when the, the, the large tree blossoms, like a little baby mm. green comes out and is the most delicious air. I miss that so much. And as I mentioned before, we drink water from frozen lakes. We melt it. So we don't even boil it. I didn't like boiling it. I would just drink straight from melted Mm -hmm. ice. And it's so tasty. It almost has its own sweetness in it. Um, So I miss that taste of the water. Um, And then food, um, we would harvest like berries in the autumn and meat mm-hmm. and fish uh, I used to eat raw and frozen. Um, so it just comes straight from the earth, comes straight from the animal that our grandparents would take care of with great love. Um, mm-hmm. I miss that very much. And um, uh, But there is an advantage. Um, so we don't have a fruit uh, growing, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but here... If you find really good organic fruit, that is just like for me. Whoa, <laughs> I've never been bombarded with that vitamin. So much flavor. Yeah, so much flavor, <laughs> exactly. And um, touching the mm. five sensation, the fifth sensation, I would say, touching. Um, I think that uh, the uh, textures that I've been touching. Back in my homeland, um, it's all like like a grass or the bark of the tree. I mean, that all I have it here. It's it's a earth. Mm-hmm. Earth is earth everywhere, and it has trees everywhere. Um, I would say less concrete, um, mm-hmm. right? Um, back in my homeland, it's all natural textures. Um, here. It's more squarey, more flat areas mm-hmm. and unnatural surfaces that I touch. But touching myself, my skin became very sharp because uh, mm. more you are in the city, more you would like to kind of go to inward journeys. And mm. it comes into um, your layers, like your skin, your muscles, uh, your, and then you go all the way to your soul. You almost like a touching your soul. And you become aware because you miss that 
and mm -hmm. you intentionally want to do that back in my versus back in my homeland it's all natural you know mm -hmm. it's um I didn't miss touching someone because my mother was touching us and hugging and kissing and all of my siblings and grandparents, we all <laughs> hug each other and kiss each other. Here, there's a lack of it. And mm -hmm. that's why you crave for that and you intentionally mm -hmm. create that. You, you create those moments for yourself and for your mm -hmm. beloved ones and, and, and families and friends. So it becomes more... Aware, so I became more aware of my <clears throat> five sensations, and um, of course, those are all the keys for um, for the traveling uh, between the mm -hmm. realms in a journey. So let's talk about traveling through the realms and the gift that you're bringing. I would love to hear about this. Yeah, so uh, this. Oh, in, in Saha shamanism, traveling between the realms, it's very important. It's a basically how the shamans would drum and the drum consider it to be um, um, a horse that you ride and mm. travel between the worlds. And it's um, all about shifting your consciousness or perception of life. And we have three worlds, middle lower and higher the lower world is a realm of fear kutal, survival primal energy and then the middle world is the realm of taptal the love um, it's all tangible world and we believe that we need to create our world out of love and then um, the gratitude realm mahtal, it's a higher world and I'm showing it in my body because when I teach people to sing, mm -hmm. um, it's very important to include all of three worlds, lower, middle, and higher. It all includes all the chakras. We call chakras mm -hmm. as an oibon, and do, those are, the oibons are um, the, the spots of the power. And mm -hmm. we rise energy uh, from the root chakra up to the higher world through your crown chakra. And we do have even higher like a 12 skies mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't end here it goes all the way up uh, because there are different layers of the body uh, outside of the uh, physical there are also other uh, bodies around us and um, shaman is the person who travels between those world worlds and then to be a shaman in my culture, it's um, it requires two things. First, you have to have a straight bloodline. Second, you have to be chosen ones. And chosen ones means you don't have a choice. You don't have a choice means the um, shamanic sickness uh, hits those people really hard in the early age when they are teenagers during that time. Mm. Uh, and it, the symptoms are very similar to mental health issues. So I'm going to use a Western uh, terminologies. Uh, we don't label people like that. We don't diagnose, but those are very, the symptoms are very similar to schizophrenia, epilepsy, losing consciousness, memory, and some pain in the physical body that traditional medical care cannot recognize cannot find the roots mm. the reasons why mm -hmm. a person would have a pain in the body and uh, the shaman is the person who learns how to deal with those symptoms and how to deal with the energy that goes through our body and the body reacts to that energy if it's not ready and all throughout the years months and even decades uh, shamans, the future shaman learns how to transform that energy uh, and, and, and then naturally fall into trance and harvest a lot of information from a web of life and deliver it through the form of art, storytelling, singing, playing instrument and dancing to the community and even you know giving the straightforward information like, Oh, here's the moose, here is the deer, and they will send hunters. Um, they would have like a, in a transcendental state, mm -hmm. a map, where is that game made? Because community would survive from that. Um, shamans are people who also predict the future. Shamans are people who can kill certain types 
type, specifically health, mental health issues, um, cancer. They could operate in a non-surgical way. They can adjust the bones. They could be herbalists. Uh, they also do certain ceremonies such as wedding, birth, death, funeral, mm -hmm. uh, cleansing, purifying the house from the harmful spirits, um, also doing blessings um, and um, working with the elements of nature, working with the weather. When there's a dry season, they would bring rain and the 12 sky shamans, they can also connect to extraterrestrials and uh so it's wow. we have 12 levels of shamans and uh, each level has own purpose and uh you kind of sit with shaman and um, define which level you are and you serve that level that realm mm. i serve uh music realm the creativity i don't go far to the you know, like a cancer or all of this. Each shaman has own own mission. And there mm -hmm. are shamans who can work with that realm. Um, I serve creativity. Uh, sometimes it comes into one-on-one -on -one sessions um, when person need healing. And I do a custom um, custom made a heal healing program and I don't like call it as a program because it's all I relate I sit with person um, mm -hmm. wherever they are which realm they're experiencing and um, for me um, those sessions uh, with people it's something that uh, call me I, I feel called uh, by mm -hmm. spirits to help person. So that's where I do my um, service. Um, and So uh, when you were, were you, you didn't have a choice. You were told you were a shaman. Is that how it works? When you said before you don't have a choice. And did you go through really difficult times in Siberia? Was there a health issue? Did you feel some of those issues yeah it's uh, all i think depends on how intense your um sickness is mine luckily was wasn't that intense so i didn't have to you know go through the agony being in the bed uh, for years or months the shamans go through that process and they go through the rite of passage uh, it's called Etteni process. Mine is opening these days in a very beautiful way uh, as a dreams. So the shamans mm. have a psychedelic dreams. They see how their bodies are eat eaten by the spirits and the bones are on, only bones are left and they the spirits which ate the body, they uh, build it on top of the bones and then all of a sudden the person who was in agony, uh, they they're like healed and they start serving other people. My process of etteni was very mild and uh, it's just equals to the level that I can go. Mm -hmm. um, I can go with creativity, like dancing and singing. I, I serve the realm where I um, teach or guide people how to take out their own songs. They're being in able to improvise and I would say song sounding to relieve your pain or to enjoy your pleasure so I work with pain and pleasure realms because I uh, when I was young I had strange pain strange health issue on my left leg on the back of my leg it was like a bump coming out and none of the doctors couldn't recognize what is that and what was the root of that sickness and uh, three springs, it was coming out and disappearing. So my mom brought me to the surgeon and they recommended to put some iodine in it and it would disappear. But um, it disappeared after three seasons. Then it came back as a nasty vein sticking out. And it's very mm -hmm. painful. It's still very painful. 
And when I dance, um, it just, I don't feel it. I don't feel that pain. And um, there's something about the singing in the pain, uh, traditionally, you know, this living in that harsh, cold conditions. Um, imagine no electricity and um, no magic pharmaceutical painkiller pills. Um, and the people in my homeland who had pain from from the cold and from health issues, as I told you, the mortality of children was really high uh, back in that time. So people really were um, dealing with sicknesses without any uh, pills or without any injections, without any numbing uh, things that we have today in a modern society. Mm-hmm. But what they would do, they would sing. And singing oh. would temporarily uh, relieve the pain. And even there's, a, there's even a form of singing called menetic. And menetic, uh, it's a menetic singing technique. It comes like... <laughs> it comes from the bottom of your uh, wow. like a stomach. Um, mm-hmm. And people sing that because they need to sing. It's not something right. that you go on a stage and you entertain. It's because... And is, mm-hmm. is that frequency healing, basically? Is it resonance healing? And I imagine that there's a song for the grief of all the mothers and fathers that lost children. I can't imagine the song exactly. that comes from all of that loss. Exactly. So there's a song that comes from pain. And there are also song, songs that comes from pleasure. And it's that, as I, as I mentioned before, it's a, uh, something that you have a pleasure from environment, from the nature, from connecting mm-hmm. to the um, all all the children of Mother Earth, such as insects and and birds and trees and rocks and plants. And, and what does that sound like? That's a that's a dagarang. So you when you uh, tap with the rhythm of the environment, like. Mm. Um, that is specifically uh, the horse rhythm. Mm-hmm. And uh, there is also Jebo. Jebo. That is Toyuk. It's a greeting of the universe, it's a higher world opening your portal towards the higher worlds and you sing that for the uh, ceremonies where you ask help from the 12 deities that I, I mentioned. Um, there's wow. also a Hohai, the circle dance, and a lead singer ask um, people to come and be the wings to fly to the higher realms. And then um, we rotate the clock clockwise and there's a specific... Uh, movement and there's mm-hmm. a, a singer that uh, call and everybody responds so it's a call and response song mm-hmm. and everybody repeats and it's like a, the dancing creates the rhythm, and then it all wow. starts from down tempo, and then uh, speed it up, and then create that war like a vortex, like a spiral energy, mm. and then all naturally get high. And getting high, that I learned, like people saying in in the American, uh, um, the English language, getting high literally, it's. It's touching or like elevating your energy to towards the higher realms. Um, so you actually um, have a soul, like an out of body effect, and the soul soul goes up and connects with the with the deities. That was the wow. purpose of Ohohai. Mm-hmm. So kind of like your psychedelic is music sound. 
Yes, exactly. Yeah. And um, you know what I've noticed also speaking about the pleasure, when you make love, you do a lot of sounds, mm. right? <laughs> <laughs> or you you taste the really delicious food and you're like, mmm, right? Mm-hmm. We right. do sounds throughout the days constantly, but we don't pay wow. attention. We don't pay attention because we're so busy with our mind trying to survive inside of matrix and matrix. When I call matrix as a our mm-hmm. tangible world, the, the cities that we build, the, the preconditions that we have today. But as a kid, we do constantly those sounds. We do constantly crazy activities. Right. When, we and, don't have the conditioning to contain ourselves. We just do it. And sound is such an interesting tool because even when you just sit with sound with your eyes closed, you realize like sound isn't out there. It's in here. There's no, there's no inside or outside or above and below. It's just like sounding. Exactly. It's just this sounding. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever noticed when you when you do humming? Mm-hmm. like simple mm-hmm. humming it their whole reverberation goes to your skeleton like to your cells like a, I feel mm-hmm. almost like water in my cells are vibrating mm-hmm. and that what the cats do when they purr I'm like they do a sound healing in order to recover themselves when they break their bones. Wow. Yeah, or they have it in their wounds. They do that. So it was discovered scientifically that they do that. And the cats also can sit um, on human body where there is a pain or some, some uh, sickness. And they lay down and they purr too. So that's truly a sound healing. It's amazing. I mean, we're really talking about the your song, you know, the web of life, the interconnection of all beings, even a cat to know to sit where a human's in pain, to use sound as a healing mechanism. It's mm-hmm. amazing. It is amazing. And speaking about a web of life, um, I released that song uh, recently in the Earth Day. Um, and um, that song... Uh, the lyrics of that song are the chief Seattle's. I intentionally have chosen those words, um, um, those lyrics to kind of connect to this land, this land that still have a lot of prayers of ancient prayers of Native Americans. And um, chief Seattle's words are really, really meaningful. And I created this song um first time in my life in English um and in Saha as a friendship and honoring and respecting this land, this culture that I stepped into five years ago. Um and um I uh recently released my uh new album, Home. Um it contains mm. six traditional songs of my people and six songs of my English uh, regional ones um, that I'm very vulnerable to put out there and uh, you can find it on Apple and Spotify it's really uh, beautiful it's very uh, soothing in my heart and finally I can Mm. connect the world to my culture and Misha Mishinka composer amazing composer from Russia he moved to the United States recently and then it turned out to be that we're both were in New York and we just decided to finally do wow. our album and it's very good for sleeping you... too oh yeah. i can't wait to hear that one some of oh the my songs gosh. are very good for for sleeping do you feel you are a bridge between the indigenous world and the modern world yeah when i call indigenous if we mean people of color yes that's one mm. of my mission to uh, unite people and to exchange our cultures, um, knowledges, knowledge, uh, wisdom. Uh, there's certain knowledge that indigenous people are ready to share with mainstream. And, and then people are becoming more curious and open-hearted towards those knowledges. And I, 
I've experienced uh, being here that um, we need to create a safe platforms where um, the indigenous people could feel safe um, and feel needed um, mm. to share their knowledge. Um, and uh, I honestly believe that we're all indigenous to Mother Earth. If it comes mm -hmm. into our ancient ancestors, um, I don't like dividing people into ethnicities, mm -hmm. um, but um, there is something that we commonly share as being um, children of Mother Nature and all our ancient ancestors, they were all hunters and, and following the natural cycle of life, law of the universe. Um, otherwise, they would not survive. And mm -hmm. um, but in a modern society, we definitely see this separation uh, be, um, because throughout the history, in a specific period of time, what happened to indigenous people around the world it's horrible. And mm -hmm. uh, um, um, me, as an indigenous person coming from um, the uh, land, what was discovered by Russians in 17th century and having impact of um, Christianity, uh, baptizing and Soviet Union when they were trying to um, get rid of shamans and burning their regalias and, and drums, putting them into jail. Um, that that would happen to my people, but um, we survived, our culture survived because shamans were secretly healing people, secretly mm -hmm. seeing people. And that is the, the thing. I, I think that is the path. If we um, speak our languages, if we honor and respect our elders who are wisdom keepers, if we learn from them, um, if we sing and dance um, our ancestors' songs and dances, um, if we learn how to, first of all, reconnect to our roots, um, mm -hmm. We can, you know, create an amazing thriving, thriving societies. Um, I think the role of our ancestors um, that constantly protect us and in the journeys, I can feel their presence and they do only protection. Um, they don't harm. They mm -hmm. constantly being with you since you've been born. And there, there are certain ancestors that are very, very close to you. Um, and in um, Christianity, you were perhaps called as a angel, uh, guardian angels, like mm -hmm. angels that protect you. Um, yeah, and in my culture, in shamanism, we see them as ancestors um, that constantly guide you and protect you and even negotiate on behalf of you in those realms if it's needed with other entities. <laughs> So when you are on stage and you are coming into a trance and you're sharing that with the audience, what, what kind of gift of resonance is that? Is that a healing resonance that's going out? And what are you downloading or sensing in those experiences up on stage? So when I'm in the stage, I'm connected to the crowd, which is a collective consciousness for me. Mm -hmm. I quite often go through the three worlds and I'm aware of people comes with a certain, um, you know, like a request of healing. And then I believe if I open portal, they can heal themselves. Um, mm -hmm. So opening portal through the lower world that shakes the old system all the preconditions and then middle world so we go with the songs of our ancestors there are specific sounds that activates the sleeping skills within your body and when i call we have a voice of our ancestors and songs of our ancestors actually you singing improvising whatever comes from you because we care their dna's and carrying mm -hmm. their DNAs means we carry their, we contain, we have their skills, whatever talents they had, and whatever suffering and pain they had, we all mm -hmm. care within us. 
and it all of a sudden might trigger it and come out. I specifically work with shaking um, that um, kind of shaking means um, going through the layers and layers of um, perception of life that we created when we were growing up as an adult. Mm -hmm. uh, when we we're children, we we're so open. And then awakening our, like, the voices of our ancestors, awakening certain uh, sleeping parts in our bodies. And then um, the higher realms, for me, it's like ascending it as a prayers, mm -hmm. seeing it as a prayer, so blessings. That's what I experience when I sing in a stage. And then when you're in the higher realms, you receive a lot of downloads. It's almost like a connecting to the deities. And then in, in some, you know, some of my students' experiences, uh, they say, oh, we had like um, extraterrestrials uh, giving us some uh, messages. Um, and then for me, those messages, like downloads, those are like, ah, like um, almost something like a visions. Um, mm -hmm. And those visions are very powerful. Um, they are almost, they, they create the shivers in your body. Um, and then they come actually anytime they might um, hit you when you are just walking or you might be in a meditation or you might talk to someone or you might be um, washing dishes, <laughs> doing some mm -hmm. homework. And all of a sudden you have that <gasps> kind of this sense of wonder and it creates shivers mm -hmm. because your body reacts. And then when I process it through my mind um, that it makes sense, mm -hmm. so much sense what I've been doing. Like um, it becomes like a part of my mission or something. So I have tears coming out as a reassurance mm -hmm. that this is it. This is something that like a it's piece like the of body puzzle. knows. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So trusting your body, intuition. And intuition, it's a download for me. Mm -hmm. um, um, imagine. It's interesting because it is similar to a psychedelic experience in some ways. Exactly. Um, just going into the patterns, the matrix, all your conditioning, seeing it, and then kind of moving that out of the body. A lot of people shake during mm -hmm. psychedelic experience uh -huh. and move it out and then experience kind of those higher realms. Have you experienced a psychedelic? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. yes. But I'm coming from the background that we don't use, as I told you. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was absolutely new. So I, mm. uh, the environment that I grew up, it creates natural psychedelic experiences. Mm -hmm. And it's just like I'm hypersensitive. I've been sitting with shamans and uh, with different uh, plant medicine and give music, like uh, supporting them, uh, supporting their journeys and their mm -hmm. clients' journeys um, without taking anything because I could connect to um, to the realms where the people are. But uh, recently I've discovered certain medicines. Uh, like I know that MDMA um, is just so powerful. It takes you straight to the heavenly realms, uh, mm -hmm. like higher world. Um, and the most sweet song and voice timbre open up in me and some of the students of mine they can also learn how to play mouth harp or sing or dance so fast quickly it's just um i've seen i've done some experiments with my students and it's just like brought me into curiosity wow i would love to do some research on how um you know unlock this gift that we have um, accelerated people who never grown up in an environment like a nat that would trigger natural um, like hormones, mm -hmm. right? That changes your chemistry in the body and changes 
the, the brain and connects like your whole body becomes a vessel like a device that you know download has a lot of downloads and um so so for those who don't ha- never ha- experience that i think psychedelics and plant medicine the psychedelics are derivatives of the plant medicine mm-hmm. yes. um and that is a great great uh gift that uh science can um offer to for the healing of the mental health issues and um I, I am very, very eager to uh, do research and see how the singing, the, the creativity that comes from you singing and dancing and playing specifically mouth harp, because mouth harp being had a great feedback on people uh, while they were journeying. Um, so I want to do some exper- wow. experiments as a, you know, this creative tools as a, not a, as an integration, but as a foundation. Right. Because it changes, sound changes the whole experience so much. And I want to know, will that uh, accelerate the healing of PTSD? Um, Mm -hmm. I have also experience of end of life. I sang for people who were passing. Um, And um, see, is that, you know, I I have um, uh, one very beautiful soul, a very young, young person, boy, who suffering from autism and autism, he was singing yeah. songs specifically the web of life he can't speak but he can sing do sounds wow. along with singing so that just leads me into um you know curiosity how the psychedelics specifically mdma and call it um it takes you to straight to the heavenly realms and psilocybin and mushroom mushroom it connects you to the middle world, to the spirit, mm-hmm. to the nature, mm-hmm. to your ancestry. Um, and it also, um, I think mushrooms are an amazing, they are, they can connect all the three worlds. So you, it can connect mm-hmm. the lower world uh, with the higher world. Mm-hmm. And then your body becomes a middle world, like almost a platform where this two, um, the entities from two realms meet each mm-hmm. other and they have a concilium so that is just the experience wow. uh in a deeper journeys but it also makes you to sing dance that we've never done before and i think ayahuasca mm-hmm. also the people who um uh, when uh, who sit with shamans of ayahuasca i heard that they they all of a sudden start singing or painting drawing and dancing right. all the talents opens up isn't it amazing that we, as a human beings, just um, can can be creators, not the creator, amazing. but a creator. Right. So right. I think that's that's very important. I think indigenous approach to that, like having guidance of the indigenous tribes that are that that been taking care of plant medicine and working with spirits of plant medicine for thousands of years, having their guidance, them working with with facilitators of psychotherapy um, in a modern society, that could be like a game changing. Um, Totally. I think it's so important. Yeah. Because our Western model is lacking our Western approach to life Um, the distance that we have from the rhythms of life and the distance that we have from our ancestors' wisdom. I think the combination, and and as you said earlier, it's the indigenous voices are so needed at this time to reconnect us to what they haven't lost and to bring that into the earth medicine space and psychedelic spaces, I think could be an absolute game changer. Exactly. Exactly. And I think um, a lot of, you know, even indigenous communities, we do have own wounds, this whole Mm -hmm. horrible events that happened. It left a lot of bleeding wounds and we need to do healing within the communities. And um, I wanted to mention Thank You Life organization that I'm partnering. Um, They have this such a great mission that allies with mine. 
um, to make uh, psychedelics as accessible for low-income people and specifically for indigenous um, communities. I think that is that could be really uh, powerful to um, to spread um, knowledge because when you are um, under psychedelics, it opens up the portal. But then the next step is what you're going to do with these downloads, what actions you're mm-hmm. going to take. Because the rest of the work, it's it, integration into your daily life, how you can change if you are in a depression. Depression is, oh my goodness, a lot of people have a depression in the United States. A lot of, mm-hmm. that's what I learned. And I, I think the specifically my the realm that I serve with this creativity and singing it can really reduce depression I've seen people uh, being transformed and become more wow. you know positive seeing m- more light and beauty of the life and um, I think depression comes also s- sort of slowing down uh, from the natural rhythm of the earth uh, and then Anxiety comes from speeding up your your rhythm from the speed of nature. It's like uh, too much, you know, like too much right. too fast. It's anxiety, and too slow, it's it's mm-hmm. a depression. That's my kind of um, kind of vision that I had, and I think the whole entire life for me, it's like a song. There are rhythms mm. in every single realm. And then if you learn how to tap with that rhythm and even play that rhythm, you stay in that realm. And then when you stay longer, you are able to da- have a downloads from that realm. And then you can weave the songs, um, the songs with even human language. Because when you journey, you don't... Um, have even human language there's something like pre uh the time the primordial primordial and then all of a sudden you have strange sounds coming from your strange right? sounds primitive very primitive even no meanings yeah. but you you know the meaning by feeling so it's it's um it bypasses mind and one as soon as it gets into uh it processed through the mind the human language kicks in and here is the opportunity. You have this tool human as a human language and you can share with people and mm-hmm. people might transform. So there's there are certain levels that you can, certain tools that you can share your experience and downloads with people through the sound. It could be without words, singing, melodies, vocalization, mm-hmm. rhythm, animals and bird sounds that what shamans do in order to fall into trance in my culture too. And you can, uh, with it coming back into your body after the journey, you can translate it into human language and share it with people. Our blacksmiths are truly, um, they create the best mouth harps. Although these instruments, um, as a one string instrument, exist around the world. There are over a hundred different types of it. It's true. It is just oh. a truly ancient shamanic instrument. I would like to share with you um, one of the improvisational pieces, specifically for the Christmas time. I wish, I you know, you usually make a wish in the Christmas time, right? Mm-hmm. So I wish that every single person on this planet Earth could experience their own gifts they can um, learn themselves through the sounds they do. Um, sounds that brings that there are backed up with emotions, emotion of uh, that comes from pain and pleasure. So learning how to dance with pain and pleasure through the sound um, that is really precious. Um, knowledge that we all can cultivate within ourselves and um, one of the basic 
um, instruments to sound. It's a mouth harp and it becomes an extension of your body. Um, so I put it in my teeth like this, right? And then I can hold mm -hmm. my breath. I can breathe through, inhale, exhale. And I hit a specific spot here. We call it tongue of the mouth harp. Mm -hmm. It creates the basic rhythm. And I put another rhythm on top of that, regulating by my breath, lips, tongue, back of my throat, palate. So there are a lot of techniques and even nose. I can, I can uh, do like this, the sound, and it will change overtone of this instrument. So this is um, really um, um, my best friend to travel with. Between the realms. so beautiful oh my gosh what a gift yeah this is really really simple actually to play and when you extract the first sound you it just makes you to fall into trance and all of a sudden your rhythm comes out your sounds comes out it it's so uh, magical how the small instrument could 
um, takes you to the different realms. And yeah, I just made that wish um, that everyone can experience their own sounds and bring it to the world. Thank you so much. That is so beautiful. You could just feel the vibration. And I know you said something like when it, it vibrates through all your bones too, right? From yep. the teeth down. Exactly. So you're feeling it all. So it's within you and then you're sharing it with those listening. So thank you so much for sharing that. What a gift. Sure. My pleasure. <laughs> thank you, Michaela, for having me and uh, having this opportunity to share knowledge of my ancestors. It's truly an important um, to team up, to mm-hmm. um, become one of the uh, light warriors of light. And mm-hmm. um, I believe that we're all part of the same mycelium web. <laughs> and mm-hmm. let's make healing and teachings decentralized um almost like um from heart to heart experience i believe that mm. we there is a, this is the time the right time uh for us to share our experiences human experience it's the most precious uh phenomenon for me and we all have also commonly shared, commonly shared experiences and i'm very curious to find what are those and uh, yeah. yeah, and only in um, friendship and collaboration we can find uh, those experiences. Yeah, beautiful. Oh my gosh, yeah. So if somebody wanted to do one of your programs, where would they find you? Um, I announce it um, first in my Instagram, Snow Raven mm-hmm. Official. And um, we will do we will put out our pre-recorded videos. Um, first, I'm going to do prompt ones under subscription on TikTok. Uh, and then the deep ones are going to come up either on our website under subscription or on Learn World Words. Our Kajabi, we'll, we're thinking about that. But I will announce that on my um, mm-hmm. Instagram. Great. Thank you so much for bringing your message to the world, your message of hope, your gift of music, sharing the shaman's voices from your ancestors, the music that you learned as a three-year-old girl. It's teeming with life. Mm. And for many of us in the West who didn't grow up so close to nature, it's such a gift to hear the sound and know that a voice And a human being could be so close to nature to take it in to the degree to then mimic it, to know the sound within. And I love that you have this vision for your life, that life is a song. And uh, thank you for sharing your song here. Mm, Thank you. Thank you for sharing your song here, too. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. Thank you, Michaela.